Okay, so now I want to show you this uh, in code. Okay, and some of this code is taken from uh, this blog post over here, which is also probably adopted from a lecture by Nando de Freitas. Um, but I've also changed it quite a lot. So this is uh, just all the dependencies we need. And I want to create the training data. I just took some points and I um, took the Y values to be the sinus of these points. Okay, and now I also want to um, look at all the other points uh, that I didn't take. So as you see, this is the uh, function that, so in circle are our training data, it's the points that we actually observed. And the line is actually the uh, function from which they are actually taken from. They are taken from the sinus uh, function. Okay, so if we look at the kernel first view, we have to define a kernel. We have to define the kernel that we uh, uh, defined in the mathematical part, which is this kernel over here, okay? I'm taking the pairwise distance between each uh, A and B, which are our X and X uh, little dash over it. Okay, and I just calculate this expression over here and I return it. Okay, so once we have a variance covariance matrix, we can just uh, apply it for our uh, different points that we want to know their values. And we can just draw from a Gaussian, from a multivariate Gaussian. Here it will be, since we have 50 points, it will be as if we are drawing from a 50 dimensional multivariate Gaussian. Okay, and so I, I, took, I drew three, three samples. I made three realizations from this multivariate normal and it gave me these three curves. If I do it again, it will give me some other curves. Yeah, there are a lot of, there are infinitely many curves that we can draw. Uh, that have this structure of covariance matrix, yeah? Okay, but of course, this doesn't interest us so much. So what we want, we want to uh, calculate the posterior. Once we want to calculate the conditional probability of our new points, given the points that we already have. So we do this with the same equations that uh, I showed you. We have to calculate uh, the K matrix, yeah? The K, uh, which is the, covariant the kernel matrix between the points and themselves. And we have to take the inverse of it. And we can decide either we want with noise or we want it without noise. For now, let's put the noise as zero, so we won't have noise. We have to calculate our K star matrix, which is the correlation between our known axes and the unknown axes. The axes here, there, I call them X tests, that we want to calculate uh, the values for them. Okay, and then the mean is just uh, KS transpose times K inverse times Y train times our, the known Ys. And the covariance is just K star star, uh, which we already calculated before. Yeah? The K star star is just the correlation between the uh, unknown points and themselves. Minus this uh, reduction in uh, variance, uh, which relates to how much these new points are close to our uh, known points. Okay, and we can also calculate the standard deviation for uh, each of those in the covariance matrix. It's just the diagonal of this covariance matrix and we take the square root of that. Okay, and now we can draw from the posterior. And if we draw from the posterior, if we draw from the posterior, we will get something like this, for example. Okay, so the dashed line is the mean. The dashed line will be the same no matter how much we, uh, how much times I will run this cell. The gray is the confidence interval for each point. It's those standard deviation that I calculated. And the other three lines, this orange, green, and red, are the lines that I drew. They will be different each time I run the cell. And the blue here is the actual function that we uh, took the function for. So we can see that the mean, this dashed red line, uh, is quite close for compared to the uh, blue, especially when you go closer to the points. And another thing you can see is that, for example, these regions over here, the um, uncertainty is very small. But for example, here, because there's a bigger distance between these two points, the uncertainty grows. And also here, when there is um, no more points, the uncertainty also grows. And from here, it will also grow. 
but the uncertainty will only grow to up to a standard deviation of one because the way we defined uh, the kernel is that the maximum um, standard deviation is one. Remember x and x with itself e to the power of minus zero is one. So this is the maximum, this is the mass maximum variance uh, for the point, but we can also change that. Okay, by, for example, by increasing this sig variance. Okay. So this is how you do Gaussian process regression, only for numerical reasons, you usually don't uh, calculate the invert of this matrix uh, straight away. We know that this matrix is positive semi-definite and symmetric, and it's usually also positive definite. If there is noise, it's uh, for sure positive definite, if I'm not mistaken. So a better numerical uh, way to uh, compute the inverse is to do a Cholesky composition or Cholesky composition. Okay, uh, you can read about it online. This is not part of this video, but basically it decomposes the, our matrix that we want to invert to two triangle matrices that are that are identical, only one is the transpose of the other. So we will get, for example, a left, a left uh, diagonal matrix times the uh, left diagonal matrix transpose. And then if we want to find the invert of K, okay, because we don't really care about the inverse of K, we want the inverse of K times something, right? So it's as if we are trying to solve this equation over here. So we can replace K with LL transpose and then consider that L transpose LTX, we call it a U. And then we first uh, solve this, but this is quite easy because it's like we solved in schools. Yeah, we, the, the matrix is already triangular. So you just uh, solve it by substitution. And once you have the values of U, then you solve LT x equal u the same way it's already the uh, uh, triangular matrix so it's also easy okay but again this is just uh, uh, in a nutshell the Koleski composition and so what this code here over here uh, is replacing the code that we uh, had before and I can put everything in one big function and uh, then now I can call this function and this is the function I called. I, I, I won't draw any more the um, random uh, functions. I will just take the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so this is the mean and the standard deviation as it's also shown here. Okay, and now I can also play with it a bit. For example, the first uh, parameter here is L, is this L thing. If I make it very small, let's see what happens. You see, this is how the mean function now looks. So it always goes to zero and the points, they matter, but they don't matter so much anymore. They, they matter, but their influence is very small. So it, it goes to the point and immediately falls to zero. Yeah? Okay, so I can put it also uh, back to one and um, I can also add noise. So I can add noise now the, the line doesn't have to pass through the point. It can also be close to the point. So if I put big noise, you know, it will go very, very close to zero. If I put a little bit of noise, it will be closer to the points, but again, it doesn't have to pass through them. And if I put a zero, then the line has to pass through the point. Okay, and you will have the code uh, linked in the description and you can also play with this. So this was the first view. I will also uh, want to show the prior view. And here, let's say that I want to um, fit uh, a line that has a fifth degree polynomial. Okay, so what I do, I take, I create a new, I create the phi of x and the phi of x will just be a matrix where um, in the first, there will be just ones. In the first column, there will be just ones. In the second column, there will be the actual x's. In the second column, x squared, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and now I will uh, create, let's say, some. I will create some prior matrix for the w. I just, 
I just made sure that it's of the form A transpose A, so it will be um, positive semi-definite, and so it will be a valid, uh, a valid covariance matrix. Okay, and let's say that I will take some noise, let's say 0 0.05, and here I calculate the same K, K star, K star star as before, and I uh, invert the K uh, matrix as before. Uh, here I do the regular inversion, not the more efficient inversion using the Koleski decomposition. Okay, and I calculate the covariance and standard deviance, and I draw this, and this is how it looks. Okay, so for our given points, uh, you can see this is the polynomial that it fits to it. And this is the amount of uncertainty around each point. Yeah? And if I would uh, reduce this to zero, then you see that now the dashed line passes exactly through all of our five points. And I also made a 2D example. Okay, so um, I took a grid uh, and I took uh, points, 2,500 points over that grid between minus 5.5 five and minus 5.5. Five. I also took some training data. I sampled a bit less points from these uh, grid and I calculated the real function of them, which I, is the sink function. And the sink function is just sinus of x divided by x. Okay, and if I plot the real function, it looks something like this, yeah? You can also do this. This is how it looks like, the sink function. And now uh, I will define the same kernel as before, the squared exponential kernel. And now I will solve exactly the same equations as before. I will get the um, values for them. Okay, and if I will plot them now, this is how it looks. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, a bit like what we had before, only the top here is a bit less high and in general, the, the shape is a bit less, it's a bit more flat, it's not as big. Yeah, I, I gave here a noise of one. So there is some noise here. Yeah, so it doesn't have to pass exactly through the point. Let's see maybe if we change this. Okay, so here, now, now it looks, without a noise, it looks like this. Yeah, you can play around with the code yourself. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.